can't I join your gang? Because you are a whip scientist and you could be a whip villain. It's the sorceress, you boob. They should call you Wimp Lash. Fight or I'll turn you into a suitcase. Just as I suspected. Hollow, you metal munching moron. Why do I surround myself with fools? Even the robots are smarter than you. Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. So a few days ago I was asking for recommendations on video games, which was helpful and infuriating because I was very specific. I said, I have a PS5, I want to play Six Days in Fallujah, but it's not being ported anytime soon. Let me know a game that's similar on PS5. And people would just talk about PCs and other consoles and but a couple people had helpful like uh, Insurgency Sandstorm and then also this uh, Metal Gear 5 The Phantom Pain except for they told me it was like Rambo 3 but I'm an hour in and I'm still in some hospital with Kiefer Sutherland and his face is covered in bandages and his ass crack is showing when he like crouches in front of me so did I get the wrong game because I see Ground Zeroes is the prologue. I didn't get that. I just got the Phantom Pain. But I'm still in a hospital and Kiefer Sutherland's freaking ass crack. And I'm not anywhere near Afghanistan like I wanted to be. But uh, anyway, um, uh, I've been on a real tear <laughs> recently. I keep getting these uh, emails where people are saying like, are you okay? Like I'm in a bell tower with a freaking sniper rifle when I'm just doing my regular thing, caustic criticism. And uh, for the last few days, I've been talking specifically about YouTube live streams and enjoying failure above all else. Basically, that's the only thing that is enjoyed. So I had a I had a good old time. I mean, I was absolutely on fire yesterday. So uh, it's always kind of hard to tell how many people actually view a community post. But like it started like pretty normal. I got up early, so I was like roasting Danny Lore for begging. Um, multiple large bills hitting at once have me in the negative. Sorry for even asking. Any help is appreciated. Yeah, so it's the beginning of the month. Those bills are rent and utilities and things that you know are coming every single month so aren't also aren't you like 40 um, but uh, so uh, I thought I would do a, a video because I'm getting I'm getting hit with multiple things I'm getting the uh, uh, gaslighting me to myself gaslighting me about myself like I'm supposed to be like oh yeah that Zach guy sounds like a ter wait a minute I'm Zach like I know what I said, I know what I intended, I know the context, I know, like, <laughs> like, what do you think is going to happen when, and then just like generic gaslighting, it's like, oh, I've never heard any YouTubers say, uh, don't give money to companies that hate you, or I've never heard them use girl boss. yeah, damn, you got me, you got me there, I'm convinced, I've only heard it like a million times, but somehow Scooby-Doo 420 wants to gaslight me and it's going to work. So one of the things I did is uh, I, I tried multiple. Now, mind you, during this same time, I'm making fun of Danny Lore and this guy who he's like the first. He's not very famous, but he's like the first comic book pro to come out during Pride Month, which basically is obliterated. I was talking to a friend who noticed the same thing and I was like, they went after beer and high school and college sports. Pearl Harbor was less of a direct attack on America than what trans trenders did last year. So that's, so sorry, regular gay people, trans trenders absolutely obliterated pride. Like people are contacting me. They're like in these liberal cities and they're like, did pride get like postponed? Like nothing is happening again. You went after beer? You went after beer and high school and college football. You might as well have just released a dirty bomb in like St. Louis or Dallas. Like, what were you thinking? We we're gonna be like, oh, yes, yes. By all means, <laughs> by all means. 
Uh, so uh, this guy, uh, so I just say, uh, on the fourth day of Pride Month, we finally get a comics pro pretending to come out of the closet. This time, it's a man with a receding hairline, buzz cut, mustache, five o'clock shadow, t-shirt, and slacks coming out as, quote, non-binary. So it was just kind of a regular day. I was just kind of roasting things at will. <clears throat> but a couple things happened recently and basically this week, and uh, I am uh, I'm a little salty. So uh, what happens is, you know, first it was X-Men 97 which anti-SJW YouTube decided was going to be terrible no matter what. Um, so first they just said it looked like it was like bad animation. Then they did that zooming in like 10 times magnification on one still of Rogue's ass in a group shot. So it was like microscopic. <coughs> then comparing it to like the one still from the original series... That was a meme because of essentially odd uh, uh, foreshortening and almost like a fish eye lens effect. Like uh, Rogue had the most ridiculously large ass ever in just like one shot. But they wanted to act like, and it was just, it was pathetic. If you want to do it as like a light joke, yeah, that's fine. But like they made it a thing because they decided this is going to be a failure and it's going to be woke no matter what and then the show comes out and although it has like a very heavy gay vibe on like everything specifically like visual design it it wasn't woke so then they got like forced into like pretending to like it and then as soon as like one article that had partial ratings for X-Men 97 which identified it as the third most popular show on Disney Plus and the most popular animated show they ran with this is a flop and that's all like it sucks like every time I mention it I get a dozen people in the because that's the narrative now they, they've proved their own narrative uh, then the other thing that was like uh, when the showrunner got fired they said and like this was over and over again he must have committed some awful crime of moral turpitude to get fired because that's the only reason a corporation would ever fire anyone and it was just like just the whole thing i was just like what the fuck is going on like you clearly decided before you saw this that it's woken soy and it's a failure and all you did was press that attack bide your time and then finish the attack so i was like what the fuck was that and then uh furiosa comes out I saw it in the theaters. It's good. Um, I, oh, of course, I got other gaslight. It's like, uh, you say that we should see it, but you've never uh, said why. And I've literally did a freaking review of it. Um, but um, <coughs> the, the absolute glee uh, I heard in the failure of it, which is not woke, not girl boss, the, uh, the creators, the actors... None of them have any controversies about attacking fans, and people are just fucking ecstatic. And then, like, th when they would have to admit it was, like, good and not woke, they would just be like, so, like, they were so pressed, so put upon, that they had to admit that a good movie was good. But then, clearly, just ec ecstatic that it failed, because their narrative is everything Hollywood puts out is woke. All the movies with women are girl boss. So even when a movie isn't woke and isn't girl boss, it's still woke and girl boss. So we should celebrate uh, its failure. And um, I can't, I can't abide that. You want to roast something that's terrible? By all means, all day long. But you want to be excited because something good failed? Because everything has to prove your narrative? I'm done. I'm done. What is that? The check, please. You know, I'm doing the, the hand signal uh, in the air. So uh, I, I put a bunch of a bunch of posts clarifying my thoughts to which it always got. Oh, we don't understand. I don't understand. You understand just fine. You're addicted to the dopamine of roasting stuff all the time in live streams. 
That's it. You don't like movies. Maybe you did it one time. You don't like comics. Maybe you did it one time. Now all you like is live streams and paying dudes to talk to you. Government names, super chats. So um, uh, Acolyte came out. Is it woke? Oh, I don't know. So uh, I started making comments to that. So in quotes, it says, is it a girl boss show? Unquote. And I said, instead of wasting hours of your life watching live streams about whether the latest Star Wars streaming show is woke, why not watch movies literally made for you? So I mentioned some. The Outpost, one of the best war movies ever made. Uh, Devotion, pretty good. Not great, pretty good. 20, 21 Bridges, that was fine. Although I was doing some research, apparently the original script was 19 Bridges, and they just like, they didn't count the amount of Bridges <laughs> correctly. Um, six Days, that was uh, solid. Equalizer 3 was really good. Equalizer 2, uh, not so much, but the third one, really good. So one of the, one of the uh, narratives of anti-SJWs is that Hollywood hates you and they do things just to bother you, except for there are literally hundreds of movies recently made, not even getting into 100 years of filmmaking, like recently made, specifically made for men your age. Velma is not for you. The Outpost is, Devotion is, 21 Bridges is, The Equalizer three is. So I say, these are all movies from the last few years made specifically for men your age. I've watched these movies recently and they're all good. Literally got a post, they're all bad. And not like sarcastically, like, like angry that I'm making this point. That literally hundreds of movies every year are made, you know, TV movies and then, you know, direct to streaming and stuff like that are made for older men. Uh, oh, but Velma got a, a second season. So let's talk about that for the thing about these live streams, they're so long. You can complain about a movie you didn't see for two hours, then go drive and see it, then go back. And now you can complain, you know, with, you know, with knowledge because you saw it. So uh, then I showed uh, a picture of, uh, it's, it's so weird. Like how just everything is so weird right now. So I saw Heather Antos, of course, because she wants to work at, Disney and uh, Marvel and Star Wars again. Like, I saw the first four uh, episodes and they're amazing. You can still, like, lose a job, lose friends because, like, you're comic skate adjacent adjacent, which means, like, a guy who went on a comic skate live stream three years ago but doesn't really talk to him that much, you go on his live stream and, like, you'll lose out on work. This woman literally is an accomplice. She used to like schedule meetings at, at uh, hotel rooms of Harvey Weinstein and actresses who he raped. And somehow, somehow, because she's a lesbian and she has a square head, like that just isn't a factor. So in quotes I said, hmm, I wonder if a Star Wars streaming show made by this woman is woke. Better watch a 52 hour live stream to find out, unquote. So I say, don't forget to pay a dude to talk to you, government name super chats, to make sure. Zach, why are you attacking your audience? Unquote. And I said, uh, because I see people losing the ability to enjoy anything but failure, and it breaks my heart. So the tenor, when they're always trying to get you back on script, to say, is to say you're attacking people, you're attacking your own side. Uh, I'm literally caring about people, quote, on my side, or just in general, that are having their lives wasted with hundreds of hours a year on things that are just meant to stir up fear, anxiety, and anger so that you give a grown man a super chat to read some inane comment. Um, this one I consider my masterpiece. This is when I felt like I was really hitting my stride. I sent this to some people and I don't think they got that it was <laughs> sarcasm because they were like, yeah, it's like, no, this is, this is bad. So uh, I show, uh, what was it? What was his last name? Poe uh, from uh, Con Air. And uh, I say, uh, so he's doing this, you know, just really happy smile because he's out of prison. But I say, uh, when the movie you were never going to see anyway fails and the talented director who made it will never get a similar budget again and half of Hollywood blue collar workers are currently unemployed, 
but the executives you hate are all still employed and giving each other bonuses because they will handle the shortfall in revenue by cutting budgets for everything and spamming out a bunch of reality shows. That's what you call victory because that, that's people are declaring victory and no, things are really bad. The house always wins. You think they're just going to be like, oh shit, we were woke. We better stop that. Dean Kane, <laughs> Kevin Sorbo, morbidly obese Gina Carano. You're our new stars for the... No, it's not going to be like that. They're going to buy the rights to every South Korean show. And then they're going to start with North Korean shows. So uh, that led to the next one where I said, the year is 2035. You've been waiting for a new Hollywood to rise from the ashes for the last five years. But all you've gotten are North Korean game shows and Dorf on Golf in HD. Because that's what it's going to be. You're not going to get good stuff. You're going to get cheap. Basically, what's happening is is what happened during the recession of, what, like 15 years ago? When that was kind of like the, the height of, oh, we don't have money. Let's just spam out a bunch of reality shows. That's what it's going to be. It's going to be South Korean and then North Korean content. And they're going to run out of that. And then it's just going to be like bringing back uh, old shit. So uh, this one also very proud of this one. Uh, I just need... I. I actually don't know what this is from. I, uh, I, I, I typed a phrase like uh, stunned silence or something like that, so this popped up. So it said, uh, when you helped drive your neighborhood convenience store out of business because their Slurpee machine was always out of order, and instead of a better convenience store with a working Slurpee machine, quote, rising from the ashes, unquote, it's now a yarn store, and the closest convenience store is now four miles away. So there's this thing that happens, I mean, all over the place, but specifically in Chicago, um, where uh, there would be so much crime at a, a, a grocery store or a drug store that the, the corporation would just shut that store down. What ended up happening, it was, it was creating food deserts where there would be neighborhoods where there, were, there was no place to get medicine for, for miles. And you know, for retired people, fixed income it's nice to have that Walgreens that CVS a block or two away but now it's a bus or two away and it's it's a real problem and I'm making a point even if you just want to continually pretend to not understand it and uh, nothing's changed they keep trying to gaslight me well you you criticize things yeah and when things are good I say they're good even if they were literally made by people who spent multiple years in digital lynch mobs trying to get me to kill myself. I haven't done that once, I haven't done that twice, I've done that literally dozens of times. The idea that you're gonna see something good and you're gonna say, <laughs> collateral damage. No, no, that, nope, no, I cannot stand by that, I cannot abide it. Because supposedly this whole thing is we, we care about comics, we care about, movies and, and, and TV shows and ideas. And what it has really devolved down into is we like live streams, we like uh, super chats, and we like dopamine. That's it. And uh, this isn't something abiding. You know, uh, you can show someone the Big Lebowski in 100 years and it had value when it came out and it will have value then. A six hour live stream about how uh, exciting it is this is the other thing that really set me off so i'm not a huge fan of the mad max franchise but i'm knowledgeable about it really really liked fury road and i liked uh furiosa i saw the others but i was just kind of like eh, they weren't really my thing so the attacks on this franchise have been just infantile it's literally like i was joking to myself they need to replace the ratings with, uh, with new ratings for Alpha Patriots. And so uh, they would be um, uh, N, H, and E. And instead of being uh, uh, rated on um, violence or nudity, it's um, if women are good at things in the movie. So uh, an N uh, is for nothing. The women in the movie are good at nothing. So this is approved for all audiences. Um, H is for help. 
uh, women can be good at things, but they need the help of men. So this is approved mostly for um, adult audiences. And then there's E, where women are good at everything. And these, as soon as a, a movie is rated E, uh, the film uh, must be burned or the digital copy must be deleted. Um, I, I, because, I mean, this is a whole thing. Seven, eight years ago, Furiosa constantly got brought up. When people said, oh, you guys just don't like female characters. They're like, oh my, what are you, oh my gosh. We love Ellen Ripley and Sarah Connor and Furiosa. And now everyone's just, they're playing this goo, what? Nobody liked Furiosa or nobody liked uh, Fury Road. It lost money. Why did they make a sequel? Well, they waited 10 years. Okay, this is, here's how it went. Three years were essentially wasted because there was a lawsuit between the production company and the studio because... It was like, if we come in under budget, we get a bonus, but then the studio ordered reshoots that made them go longer. And they're like, that doesn't count. You can't just order reshoots. Like we finished the film. You decided you wanted more stuff, but so they spent three years on that. Then COVID happened. And so that, that was five years. And then they started production and then it came out after nine years. One of the things that drives me nuts, if people are talking about this, it's like, this movie is 10 years too late. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> This movie was supposed to come out before Fury Road? Well, I guess technically that would. You understand what I'm saying. Like, this is the next movie in a franchise. Like, the last movie came out nine years ago. How is this ten years late? And maybe you want to say it's, it's, it's you know, the typical time for a sequel is, what, about three to five years? So you can say, oh, maybe it's about four to five years late. But again, three years of a lawsuit, two years of COVID, they basically made it as quickly as they could. The other thing was just, I mean, people are talking, again, not an expert, not even a huge fan of this franchise, which is weird because I kept getting called a shill. Um, but um, I, somebody put in there, they're like, uh, this needs to return to what it was, a man, his dog, and a car. And I'm like, that's, okay, first of all, almost the entire first movie, yes, he does have a car, uh, but he's he's a cop like he, he's a uniformed essentially highway patrolman um, uh, and uh, you're you're mainly describing the second and parts of the third movie but even like in the last one he had the car for like two minutes and it got destroyed like you're basically making up you're you're trying to make like the Mad Max series like uh, like it's like Batman or Indiana Jones or James Bond where it's like that character he's in almost every scene everything revolves around him no go actually watch the movies mad max will disappear for 20 minutes from his own movie constantly in fact there's even a theory that mad max doesn't exist in the mad max universe that is basically people telling fables you know oh, we, we had to deal with this guy and we you know we, were, we we couldn't really figure it out and then and then max showed up and then everything was better but really it's just like a mass Revolt, like you see at the end of Fury Road, he everyone's celebrating. He just kind of wanders off. Um, so I, I, I also the whole Goo Goo Gaga of like, you said it's Mad Max, but he's not in it. He's he's in the movie, so you didn't see the movie. He's in all the movies to varying degrees, and calling it a Mad Max uh, uh, saga or whatever they called it, yeah, Furiosa a Mad Max saga. That was just it's in the Mad Max universe, which. More than any other <coughs> franchise, Mad Max is about the world more, it is, more than it is about, like, a guy. Um, although it's kind of funny, in the first movie, like, they're like, the world is collapsing, but, like, they're still cops, even though they're, like, operating out of what looks like an, to be an abandoned building. And there's also, like, correct me if I'm wrong, it's been a few years, aren't there, like, uh, resorts like uh, like little, it's kind of like glamping. At one point, like it's like a family, and they're like, "Oh, we're going camping." <laughs> like what? The other, the other reason I could never really get into the original first three movies is it was supposed to be like this ecological disaster, but like it's just these, these pleasant like blue skies. It's just like, I mean, yeah, put some sunscreen on, but I think everyone's fine. And you would even see like foliage in the background. They're like, "Oh, just just ignore that." Um, so the, the Fury Road and Furiosa really, 
they really sold like things are really bad uh, ecologically. But um, especially like I think the one the, the so George Miller is uh, not another thing that bothered me. They're like, well, how are we supposed to know that this wasn't just a woke because it's 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 the same guy making all these movies for almost 50 years. He has a track record. It's not they didn't just hand it to like two people who directed a few CW superhero show episodes. Like it's 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 the guy who created the franchise. Here's another thing. This is probably should have been another video. It's driving me fucking nuts with the whole acolyte thing. Is uh Oh, woke star Star Wars. Let's get George Lucas back, even though you guys mocked him like just relentlessly from like the the, the special editions through the prequels. Every every mention of him for like twenty years. Now you want him back, but this is essentially the first ten years of uh, Star Wars content, and you got three movies. Generally, everybody likes. I know uh, most people kind of agree that Return of the Jedi is like the worst of them, but they're all beloved classics. Basically everyone likes the first three uh, Star Wars movies. And uh, that's a grand total of 376 minutes. Now let's get into all of the other Star Wars content made during the first decade of this franchise. You got the Star Wars Holiday Special, Caravan of Courage, the first Ewok movie, uh, Droids Season 1, second uh, Ewok movie, and then there were two seasons of Ewoks. All of this shit was terrible. I mean, it was just awful. I saw all of it, and it was... Well, I didn't watch every episode of Droids and Ewoks. I watched the first couple, just hoping it would be good, because it was the only Star Wars content out there, and it was just absolute shit. All of these were fucking awful. Like, just huge disappointments and like I don't know what they signed with Nelvana but they just got to just utterly destroy animated Star Wars for the first uh, 10 years but you got the good Star Wars content 376 minutes you got the god awful Star Wars content 1,221 minutes so there was four times as much almost four times as much Star Wars garbage as there was good content which I don't think it's even that favorable I think it might be six times I mean there's there's Force Awakens was solid I rewatched all three of the sequels I don't know like a year ago um, uh, Last Jedi was uh, not really that good. <laughs> I liked it the first time I saw it in the theaters. I, I rewatched it. I go, ooh, yeah, this is not good. Uh, Rise of Skywalker was fucking insane. It feels like it feels like a literal fever dream. Like you describe it, and you're like, yeah, I was hallucinating that there was like all these star destroyers. It's like, no, that's that's, and there were like horses on the top. No, that happened, and and people said they fly now, even though they been flying in the clone yeah no all all and didn't someone get eaten by a snake no there was a giant snake kind of yeah no <laughs> and, and the force tug of war and like the the lame fake out that Chewbacca was in there uh with a spaceship um but what I'm trying to say is um all of these narratives they're all false all of the the narratives that are being forced upon us by anti-SJW YouTube they're all false they're based upon ignoring everything that doesn't prove the, the the narrative. So you want to talk about, oh, you know, back when George was in charge and when things started, it was so great. No, it was one good minute of content for every four minutes of absolute dog shit. Like this stuff was like punishment to watch all of this stuff. Um, but uh, just to bring it home. So. You have all these Mad Max fans who never talked about Mad Max before, who clearly know they're, they're describing some other franchise that doesn't exist. There's more of a traditional hero franchise, which is not is not Mad Max. That's not the franchise at all. 
Um, so you're making up a fake franchise that never existed. You're not even aware that the same guy's made all the movies, so he has a track record. You can go, go look at his stuff, and he's never done Woke. He's never done, uh, what do you call it, uh, attacking the fans. He's just made movies, and now he's 80. And the, the, uh, the, the cruelty, like I'm making these analogies, and, and they're just like, we don't care about the blue-collar workers. It's like, yeah, hey, sorry they're lighting technician from season three of Barry. Yeah, you need to be unemployed because Scooby Doo 420 has some weird gay feud with Hollywood. I don't know. I don't know what. To, I don't know. What do you What do you tell your daughter? Just say that you're a bad person. <laughs> just 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 tell her you're a bad person. They're lighting technician second class or whatever they call that. Um, and then, like, I'm giving these analogies. It's like, you know, like the Slurpee machine doesn't work. It's like that convenience store needs to go out of business. Like, why does a whole store have to go out of business because you're slightly inconvenienced? I even saw it with a friend who he used to watch these channels. He kind of got out of the habit of it. And then he recently got back. And I can literally tell because the way he talks, it's all, it's like super extreme. So American Airlines had this uh, issue with, it's like a, it's called a scheduling cascade. You know, these flights don't make it so... They don't make the, the other flight and they don't make the return and it just becomes this cascade of uh, delayed and canceled flights. So it happens and they're showing these pictures of uh, DFW, three hour lines to go to customer service, which I've actually had that happen and it's not the 1980s, you have a phone in your pocket, just call customer service. Yeah, you might wait for 30, 40, 60 minutes, but that's what happened. I, I couldn't fix it on the, uh, the app. So I wait in line. It's like, wait, I'll just, even if, like, this is a three-hour line. So I think it only took like a half hour. But he had to go through this recently uh, on a trip. And then he's like, yeah, they're probably going to go out of business. Talking about American Airlines. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? They had a bad week. Like, why is that of, like, the, like, that's all, that's always the goal right now. Like, oh, I'm displeased this entire company this entire industry needs to collapse so that a better one rises from the ashes like talking like skeletor or apocalypse from the x-men i've talked about this this is youtube poisoning this is uh, audience capture um audience capture is when people start doing you know the things that oh it's basically hey dance monkey that's the type of situation like you start off wanting to talk about this but you get more views and more super chats and more ad revenue if you kind of go in this direction. And then there's another one. I just coined this phrase uh, this morning. Um, I call it algorithmic dowsing. You know, with the the stick and you're looking for the, the water under the ground. Because a lot of this is people changing what they used to do. You know, they used to like things, but that's not popular. you got to say everything's terrible and everything's woke. And it, even if it isn't woke somehow it's still woke except for the algorithmic dowsing tends to lead you just back to audience capture um there's a couple of comic uh centric uh youtube channels that nobody's talking about and they're getting like these huge like hundreds of thousands of views and basically what they're doing is video essays um essentially documentaries they're spending a few more hours editing so it looks like something you would see on cable and you know is not stuttering over their words not you know uh, probably an outline or maybe even a script written for it and you know minimal production value but just a little bit more care and crafting and outlines and scripts and and I mean it's real basic stuff it's like this is how the Ninja Turtles were invented like <laughs> hundreds of thousands of views um, and one, another one of these guys, he's on the, uh, the SJW side, but he spends a little bit extra time to, instead of making a rant, to make it like a more formal video essay. And again, hundreds of thousands of views. And, but they're kind of like, one of them kind of avoids the quote, culture war, unquote. And one of them comments on it, but does it in a more kind of traditional, professional way, even though this guy is a huge douchebag. <laughs> like he, he's been in every Twitter uh uh, uh, digital lynch mob going back 10 years but for some reason when he decided to commit to doing YouTube videos he like really churched it up 
and he's doing quite well. Uh, whereas most of the people who get caught up in audience capture, uh, algorithmic dowsing, for a few of them do very well, but most of them there's a limit. And it's well below what these kind of, quote, boring, unquote, more professional YouTube channels are currently getting. Um, so uh, uh, I've talked about so many things. How do I form a thesis? Um, if you're roasting something that's bad, fair game. If you're roasting bad behavior, fair game. If you're celebrating failures of good things because you have some weird gay feud against an entire industry, you want an entire American industry with hundreds of thousands of people that rely on it to crumble for the most ridiculous theory that a better one will just rise from the ashes. No, I cannot abide that. It Take a step. Everyone's taking it like this is like some huge attack. Take a step back. Take a one week break. Because another person said the same thing. They're like, I used to be all into these channels, you know? And then I forget, they went on a trip or something like that. They didn't listen to them for a week. And then they came back and they just saw it and heard it in a completely different light. It's like, oh, these people are just like the 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 science is settled before they do the experiment. X Men ninety seven, it's woke. Why? Because it's X Men, it's Marvel, it's it's Disney, it's woke. Oh, it's not woke? Oh, um, the showrunner's probably a criminal. <laughs> Where did you get that from? So just anyone who gets fired is a criminal? What the hell? And then like one article, it's like, oh, the, the season isn't finished, but uh, it still did better than completed seasons of other... Ah, oh, flop, flop. In its flop era, it's like, okay. So you decided what it was going to be beforehand. Everything proves your narrative. If it doesn't prove it, it just gets ignored. You, you love Mad Max, but you don't nothing about him. You don't know the franchise. You don't even know that George Miller made it. Again, not a huge fan. There's been five movies. There won't be any more. Oh, that was the other thing that just made me flip out. I saw people talking, you know, that loved Mad Max so much, the character. And the next... There's, there's two other ideas in development. One, nobody's, you know, George Miller hasn't talked about it. The other one was concentrating just on Max in between the years of uh, Thunderdome and Fury Road. So supposedly that thing you wanted, because you're number one Mad Max films, you think it's some sort of, <laughs> I'm traveling with the dog. <laughs> it's like the smallest part of the movies. Like to, des to describe the franchise that way, you just, you haven't watched the movie. You're just making it up. Um, but uh, you supposedly love this character, but a future movie in this franchise that was going to be made by the creator of the franchise is not going to happen. And uh, I, I actually, it's funny, you can offend chat GPT. You know, it's, it's, it's told like, oh, this is, like it'll, it'll act all weird if you act like certain questions. So I said, like, what is the opposite of autism? <laughs> because I think I have it. Far from not picking up on social cues, I, I really notice them. I hone in on them. And you can type the words that you say and go, oh, look, I, I, I'm, no, I said I was sad. I can hear your voice. When you're talking about future Mad Max movies not happening, and you're like giggling practically, and you have these sparkling anime eyes, I know that you're excited that they're not going to happen because this somehow helps your weird gay feud against all of Hollywood, an American industry that somehow has to collapse entirely and be destroyed for nonsensical reasons. And then when you talk about how something's good, you just go like, yeah, it wasn't woke or it wasn't a girl boss. Well, that's, a, that's, that's, that's a ringing endorsement. No, I can see when something is good, if it doesn't support your narrative, it bothers you. You know, the whole tenor of all the coverage of Furiosa for the last two weeks could have been like, oh man, this this is bullshit, man. I don't know who, but somebody affixed this, this false girl boss reputation to this movie. It's completely untrue. It's a good movie. If this kind of stuff tanks, we're not going to get good movies like this. We're going to get safe shit. We're going to get 
North Korean game shows. It's just going to be Chris Pratt as every cartoon character. Oh, he's playing Inspector Clouseau. Oh, does he do a French accent? No, he doesn't. But it's Chris Pratt. Middle America loves him, so it's just going to be a bunch of Chris Pratt crap. That's what it's going to be. It's going to be, what was that? Fucking Netflix movie. Red Notice. With uh, a bunch of people you recognize. It was The Rock. It was the other two, Wonder Woman and Deadpool. And that's that's what we're going to get. That's what the future is going to be. A bunch of lowest common denominator, easy crap. And North Korean game shows and dwarf on golf in HD. And all the gaslighting you have for me, you can just, oh, so we have to see that? Never said that. Not even once. I didn't say you had to see it. I'm saying it's good. And basically all of anti-SJW YouTube combined like Voltron to say like, oh man, this helps us so much if it fails. Who cares if hundreds of people made this? Who cares if they were out in the desert trying their best to make the best damn movie? We don't care about movies. We care about super chats. We care about our narrative. And if entire industries have to be destroyed, burned to the ground, remember when everyone was all clutching their pearls and, and fainting on a couch because like one comic pro said that he wanted the whole industry to burn down if he didn't get his way? Now you've got a dozen channels, thousands of viewers saying the same thing. What the fuck? Nobody planned to get here. I'm not calling any of the people who do this type of stuff evil or bad. I'm just saying. At one point, you liked comics. You liked cartoons. You liked movies. You liked streaming shows. And through various means, quite honestly, I don't think really any fault of your own. Things just happen. Life just happened. You just kind of just got swayed this direction or that direction. I'm saying. You're off target. You didn't start this you didn't start your youtube channel for this you absolutely did not you probably started the same reason i did i saw things were just getting crazy i was like why is nobody talking about this why is why is every comic book website say captain marvel is like the most popular comic out there and it's it's very mediocre i don't see i looked at the sales the sales are terrible like what's going on that's fine look into stuff further but there's it's gotten, it's gotten way too dark. Everything right now is about destruction and obliteration and, and losing the ability to enjoy anything. You gotta check with your peers. Oh, I'm like, am I gonna be in trouble? Am I soy? If, if I like Furiosa, it's got a good, 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 good girl as the lead. Oh, hmm, I don't wanna get cooties. Ridiculous. Get back on track. Take a break. Have a tolerance break. If you, if you watch these shows, take a week off. See if you still believe that an entire American industry should be burned to the ground because a better one's going to magically appear out of the ashes. Show me when that's ever happened. And if you make them, I know for some of y'all it's your main income, but take a vacation. Just something to think about. Because it's... It's getting real dark and it's unhealthy and it might be making some of y'all some good money, but you, you didn't start for this. You started because you love something and now you're creating a situation where people are losing the ability to enjoy anything but failure and it's heartbreaking. It's tragic. Anyway, it's, I had to turn off the fan when I record these videos so I'm about to freaking pass out. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.